Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Chris here, CG Aviator, for another exciting episode with the F-35B Lightning II. And we're going to be landing on the deck of the Queen Elizabeth carrier. Now we're going to be doing a shipborne rolling vertical landing. Here's a demonstration of the real thing. More from the pilot at the end of the video. And I've been watching Sims, the real playbacks, to try and align what Microsoft Flight Sim can do to the real deal. The reason the British have used this procedure is because they don't have a trap, a cable to stop the aircraft. Therefore, they need a way of being able to bring back extra weight because there is a weight limit to hovering. But if they add a little bit of forward flight to it, they can use lift from the wing to land successfully. So let's go have a look at how it's done. OK, welcome to the cockpit of the F-35B and the deck of the Queen Elizabeth carrier. As we go through, I'll talk about some of the workarounds that I'm using to make this as realistic as possible. And whilst we're taxiing up to take off from the ramp, uh, I'll mention that I've set a waypoint for the carrier. This is a static carrier that are mobile ones available. But as a waypoint, the green arrow points to it. So I've got that point into the carrier and the white course bar is set up for the BRC, which is 090. We'll talk more about the lineup later. But first things first, we need to take off from the ramp. So we'll convert it to stovel mode. And the developers have done a brilliant job because that looks excellent. And this takeoff will be a low power, low speed version because if you get to a certain speed and or power, the model defaults to a horizontal position, which won't work going up a ramp. So I don't put full power until now and backstick. <laughs> and the results look awesome. So now the gear comes up. We'll transition from Stovall to normal forward flight. And I'll position downwind at 800 feet and 300 knots. Now the reason I'm going for 300 knots is I'm not going to fly a standard case one approach because I find that the Stovall mode isn't as fluid and perhaps even realistic as I'd like. I work around that by extending downwind and turning final at about two miles. If this was a case one approach, I'd level at 800 feet and 250 knots. I'd configure the aircraft, I'd descend to 600 feet, and then I'd turn final roughly a beam the landing area on the ship. Which I think is what they did for their practices in the real aircraft. But like I say, this is a little bit of a workaround. So the approach speed for this configuration in this model is about 150 knots. And we're about two miles, so we'll put the gear down and start our left turn. I recommend that you add 10 to 15 knots on top of your on-speed alpha approach speed if you're turning around the corner. And once I roll out, I will then engage Stovall mode. And I'll try and keep 150 knots. You can see the green arrow is lining up with the white line, which means I'm approaching my extended centre line. I'm just allowing the aircraft to descend ever so slightly. So here we go, approaching the rollout. I'm a little bit fast, but Stovall mode will fix <laughs> all of that. There we go. Now I also need to power up significantly to hold 150 knots. And I'm also descending now to keep the carrier around about the minus two and a half degree in the HUD pitch ladder. My next event is deciding when to decelerate. Now the real aircraft will tell the pilots when they need to slow down. That happens around about 350 to 400 feet on the rad out. So that's what I'll do now. I'll decelerate to 60 knots and I'll also level off at 200 feet on the rad out. All's going well so far. We'll keep driving in until I can see the minus five degree line on the HUD is at the base of the ramp on the deck. And then I'll start my final descent down to the carrier. Now after this approach, I'll do a external playback because it looks amazing. And I'll also do a stop start version of this just to talk through some extra parameters and ways to improve it when you practice. So here we go, committing down, we're about 50 knots. I want to make sure the carrier is definitely going to pass underneath my aeroplane before I touch down. 
I want to aim for about 45 to 40 knots. And now pitching back to get nose high. Idle. On the brakes. Success. <laughs> this looks brilliant. I particularly like the spray that gets kicked up as soon as it passes over the deck. You can notice that the landing is a little bit three-pointy. So in this model of the F-35, it has a relatively low nose attitude for the 50 to 60 knots you'd expect to approach. But if you get below 40 knots and pitch back, you can play with the rates of descent such that you land with the main wheels first and then the nose wheel. But it takes a very specific speed, around about 40, 45 knots, and to be a little bit more aggressive than I was with pulling the nose up to get that just right. So that'd be my recommendation should you have this model and want to practice it yourself. And to finish with, and because I've been practicing my video editing skills, we'll hear from the actual pilot, Peter Wilson, who flew this for the first time in October 2018. But if you like this video, please consider hitting the like button if you want to support the channel, and the subscribe is always appreciated. But until the next time, take care and fly safe. It wasn't without its stress, you know, at the time it didn't work out exactly perfectly as we intended it to, uh, but we ultimately executed it safely and professionally. Uh, we got the data that we wanted and now we're ready to move on and do more and I'm looking forward to doing the next one because that was pretty special.